Hey Troy. Yes, I I was thinking it's time to make some more Parmesan cheese because we've run out. Yeah. And I might as well make a video. Yep. Okay. And it got me thinking. Cultures and milk is quite affordable. And, and it is. And making your own cheese is a fraction of the price to buying it. It is okay. indeed. It's a fact it is. The only problem is the initial outlay for your moulds and your cheese press probably being the worst. Yep. So I thought, why don't we start our cheese videos off with making your own press. Well, I've got some timber, and we've got some threaded rod, some screws, nuts and bolts. Let's go make one. Hi guys, I'm Troy. And I'm Emily. And welcome to Aussie Homesteading. Today, we're going to make a cheese press. So, what we've got here, so I've cut up some bits of timber already so you don't get bored with watching me drill holes and cut pieces of wood. So what I've got is I've got two pieces here, 350 mil long, 90 mil wide, with two 12 and a half mil holes in each of them. I've got three pieces here, about 250 mil long. Two of them have got a hole in the centre. 28 mil holes. And they've all got a hole drilled halfway through. All these measurements will be in the description below. As well as we will give you a total price for what this uh, press cost which will flash on the screen somewhere now and uh, we will list the sizes of bolts and screws and everything that you need to do it yep. with the prices that we paid currently in July 2019. Yep and what we got here is some uh, press blocks that I've made up as well. Now we're going to sand all these later and Emma's going to give them a nice varnish and a lacquering. Alright, so... But we'll do that off camera. So, let's get started. So what we need to start with... Can you pass us the threaded rods? Now, I've made these threaded rods 320mm long because this is the mould I'm basing it on. So you've got room to put couple of packers in and screw it down without having to unscrew it and go down again up and down again it makes the job a bit easier I've made it wide enough to fit another wider mold so and we can go a little bit even wider so it'll press it down that's it and I've got to cut more plates for these as well. Which we will be showing in another video how to make your own cheese moulds because that's another expensive thing. These things aren't cheap, alright? Not at all. So what did this cost? This one's like $15, alright? Now, um, I can do that one off the top of my head and why? For example, in Bunnings, cutlery sort of things for your drawers. The only difference it's got its sides, it's similar plastic and thickness. It's just this one's got holes in the bottom, this one doesn't. So we're going to drill holes in the bottom. There are other things that we do, for example, for camembert moulds. I think this was about $8.50. This is a, yeah. a camembert mould that you're going to buy, or blue cheese, that you're going to buy from your um, brew shops. We're going to show you a way to make these for like $0.40 cents or something. We'd yeah. work it out, but it wouldn't be much. It's not that much. And we've made, and that's what we've 40 used cents in a little bit of time. Yeah. So we'll show you how to make them. That's going to be another video. Um, but this one's specifically for the uh, press. Okay, so our first step. So, these the two 350mm long, with the two holes. Grab one. Can I have the nuts and washers, please? You may. Put one through. I'll have a 
washer and a nut. Now you just want to put it your nut down just the end of the threaded rod and another washer and nut. So I'll show you an easier way to do it. Now I'll show you the, the proper way of doing it. <laughs> Another washer and a nut. Put one nut on first. And a washer. Then poke it through. And washer and a nut. And that was a lot quicker. <laughs> that was a lot quicker. Now, we want to just tighten these up. Tighten them up from the top ones. Just because you've set the bottom ones where you want them. Which and is flush. Which is flush. Now, these two pieces with the holes in them, they go, slips over the washers. Would you like now, me to hold that? And some screws? Two screws. Now I've drilled countersink holes in the timber for these screws because they're only short and I don't want them to pop through the other side. And you don't want to have to do it too tight. And as you see I'm not using a glue because we're going to be using it for food we don't want the glue and it'll repel the lacquer as well so we want to protect the timber from any moisture and the lacquer mm -hmm. will actually seep in and form a pot form a glue around it as well which is more than enough um, to pro protect the to protect it from any movement or anything the lacquer will serve as that purpose. That's right. And it's essential to protect the timber because cheese making is just so liquidy. Um, otherwise your press isn't going to last long. So um, definitely no raw timber. Yeah. And timber being porous is just going to suck it in. It'll that it swell. Is. And it'll be no good for you. So the next one just goes in the middle here and that is just so that you're not bending the, um, the timber and you're getting more force from the above pressure. And now, for a demonstration, can I have the wing nuts? You can. And the last two washers in the pack. Now, for a 
example, let's just pretend this is our cheese that we are pressing. And the reason you want to make a lot of these is you may choose to use as you go along and you look at all the different cheeses that you can make, you may use a bigger mould because you want the width, but it may not have much cheese, whereas you may fill it for other ones. It also depends on the amount that you're making. That's right. So you want to have as many of these press points that you can so, so that you can really um, play with the moulds for what you're using. So there we go. Down even, screw them down to flush, and you just turn at an even rate until you get the desired pressure Which size. Which is liquid coming out. Yeah. And then, you know, as you're making cheese, it will go through it, you'll add pressure as time goes on, but pretty well, there is a 100% working cheese press. How quick and easy was that? That's it. Yes, now it's going to take me, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes tomorrow to give everything a sanding and I will um, varnish. That's not going to take me long. No. And then letting it dry overnight, lacquer it up, let it dry overnight, all up. This probably takes half an hour to make. Now, one thing threaded rod. It's a 12mm threaded rod. This is zinc coated. Don't use the galve coated because screwing it on and off all the time it will damage the galve. It's a lot harder to use um, to screw on and off. Use that if you're going to put something permanent. So use the zinc coated then you can unscrew it easily. Now, people may say, why aren't they using stainless? The problem with using stainless is when you put stainless on stainless and you try it and thread it down, it actually destroys itself. And you will use it maybe a couple of times and as you're tightening it down, it'll seize up and you won't even be able to undo it. Lesson I learned. It, we've gone with the zinc coated. Your cheese isn't touching it, so that's all fine. And just remove the rods before you go and do your lacquering. Otherwise, you'll actually, if you get some on here, you might spare, have to spend a bit of extra time cleaning it off. And that's it. Mm. Simple, easy. Look forward to the uh, making the cheese moulds. Yep. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it very informative. And please like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the uh, comments. Thank you. See ya.